Local History Group. And it's my honour to welcome you all here this afternoon to the launch of this interpretation panel on the Grainy Ambush. Uh, we especially welcome Senator M Mark Wall for agreeing to launch uh, the panel for us. And a special welcome is extended to members of the families of those associated with the Grainy Ambush. I know I haven't managed to pick up everyone yet, but I do know that we have the nieces of Ned Byrne of Clonmore, Hackettstown, Carlo, the youngest man to die in the ambush, and uh, Martin and Liam O'Neill, descendants of Michael O'Neill, who have travelled from the UK to be here with us today. Michael was originally uh, born in Nochanana, but um, moved to Castle Dermot at a young age, so we claim him as a, as a Castle Dermot man. I, mean, uh, I must uh, thank the weather gods for staying away, and hopefully they'll continue so for the next half hour or so. And obviously to apologise for the potential noise uh, of the roads about, which is why one of the reasons to try and get you in a bit closer to me. Um, the, this interpretive panel, which commemorates the Grainy Ambush of 1922, is the second in a series of Telling Tales, Heritage Signs for Castle Dermot, which is organised by our local history group. And these will be erected around the town and local area over the next number of years, dealing with various aspects of our parish's rich heritage. As we commemorate the centenary of one of the most turbulent times in our recent history, we believe communities should continue to talk about and record local events from their perspective. The Grainy Ambush Interpretive Panel will ensure that this episode in our local history does not fade away without being documented and acknowledged. The rationale for citing the panel here on the Grainy Road uh, from Castle Dermot, rather than actually out the site of the cross itself, was purely for health and safety reasons. There's presently no safe parking at the site, so while you may want to drive out there, there is nowhere you can actually stop. Um, uh, but Kildare County Council, uh, in the next uh, short while, will actually put signs out there saying Grainy Cross, so in future people know they have arrived uh, 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 at that particular area. Um, more than any of the commemorations in this past in the past decade facing our troubled times of the civil war of 100 years ago deciding on what we would choose to remember and highlight and how we could achieve a balance of presentation was no easy challenge so as chair of the Castle Dermot Local History Group I would like to acknowledge the following members for enabling this important event in Castle Dermot's history to be marked Michael Dempsey who very much led this project from the beginning George Corrigan and Dr Sharon Green and that's only those for extra work but everyone else was involved as well. But I must thank very much James Durney and Kevin Murphy of the Local Studies, Genealogy and Archives Department of the Kildare Library and Art Services who have supported our efforts to commemorate the ambush since we actually first explored the possibility of doing so. To Mark Gearn, artist and archaeologist who created the reconstruction drawn and James Durney, who led uh, on the wording from his research and articles on this event. We gratefully acknowledge the financial support of the Castle Dermot Tidy Towns Committee, the County Kildare Decorative Commemorations Committee, the and the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaeltacht and Sports and Media under the Decade of Centenaries 2021-2023, and obviously Kildare County Council. So the format of today will be uh, Father, Dem Father Tom Kennedy in a few moments will lead us in a remembrance for all those who were involved in the ambush. Uh, James Dorney, local historian, will give us a short overview of the events. Then Senator Mark Wall will do the form and availing of the panel. Then I will close the proceedings, the formal proceedings here, and we'll sojourn to O'Neill's there in the Castle Inn for uh, some refreshments. So our first speaker, uh, our first guest th this afternoon, is Father Tom Kennedy. Father Kennedy arrived in Castle Dermot in August of this year as parish priest. And it's the first thing I heard about him was that he was an interest in history. And he was quick to remind us that in 2025 there will be another event for us to commemorate locally. It's 800 years since the canonisation of one of this parish's famous sons, St Lawrence O'Toole. However, today in Castle Dermot we recall an event in the Civil War, a conflict where brothers and sisters, friends and relations turned on each other. Abraham Lincoln, referring to the American Civil War, once said, both sides read the same Bible and prayed to the same God and each invoked his aid against each other. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Father Tom Kennedy uh, to lead us in remembrance of both sides who were involved in the Grainy Ambush and to remember all those impacted directly or I indirectly in its aftermath. Father Tom. Yeah. 
Dear friends, I begin by thanking the members of the Art History Group in our own parish for the great work they've done on various occasions, of which this is simply the latest, and we trust not the last. We're grateful to each and every one of them. Today we have the opportunity to remember a, a tragic occasion. It gives us cause to remember all the things that are brought before us in life and the various controversies, some of which may be many and great and deep, that can arise for any of us. The occasion that happened not yards from where we are now recalls indeed how many tragic events have happened in our history, of how our history is a broken history and an interrupted history in so many ways. We're also recalling, of course, that so many historic events have happened in our parish, as we see in the buildings within 300 yards of where we are now. Today we remember a tragic incident in an ambush. It is not for us to mention the conscience of any other of any person who was involved in this on either side, but we have a, an opportunity today, on this afternoon, to recall the seriousness of the events and of how dedicated people were to believe, to do what they did on that day. We're also given the opportunity today to reflect upon the many tragic incidents that we find in our world today, not least in Ukraine, and the severity of the occasions there, the many, many questions that arise of justice and injustice, of mercy and the lack of it. We see there, and indeed in other places of trouble throughout the entire world, that we indeed are if we are to be serious-minded adults, then partakers of questions of conscience and of what is right, of what is appropriate, of what is practical, and is what, what is possible, of what is honourable and what is dishonourable. These things should lead us all in our own lives simply to reflect upon these things. Today, we take the opportunity to speak on these things, but we may also take a word an opportunity to rest and to have a moment's silence as we consider these things. Dear Heavenly Father, today we commemorate those who took part in a tragic incident within yards of where we are now. We ask you for mercy, not least on this day dedicated to St. John Paul II, who is much dedicated to mercy remembering that tomorrow is indeed Mercy Sunday in a special way. And we remember, too, all of those people who were affected indirectly by that incident. We recall the sufferings they had of mothers, of fathers, of brothers and sisters, of those who were witnesses to this tragic occasion. And we ask you, Lord, to put into our hearts deeper concern for the many, many causes that are before us today in Ukraine and so many other places throughout the world of how we should all be motivated by mercy and justice and how we should pause to reflect before we speak and before we act and to consider wisely the great things that are before us of how we can act with wisdom, the wisdom that only you can give and to act thereafter upon that wisdom. Today, indeed, we have cause to reflect. Thank you, Father Tom. Our next, our next uh, speaker is James Durney. James is a graduate of Maynooth University. He's award-winning Irish author, local and military historian, and historical consultant from NACE here in County Kildare. He's a prolific writer with over 22 books on Irish history to his name. He's also worked with Irish Language National Broadcaster TG4 and was consultant and chief researcher on war, on war stories from the Irish National Broadcaster RTE. James Durney works uh, in Kildare's, County Kildare's Local Studies Genealogy and Archive Department, which is currently based uh, in Kildare. Uh, and he was historian in resident for Kildare's Decade of Commemoration Committee from 2015 to 2017 and serves as a committee member of the Kildare Federation of History Groups and the NACE Local History Group. He's a regular speaker uh, to local history meetings around the county and beyond. Um, and uh, James, good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Liz.
In the heady days following the centenary of the East Horizon, the Kildare Decade of Commemorations Committee looked beyond to the War of Independence and the Civil War. There had been nervousness as we approached the 100th anniversary of our struggle for independence, but it proved unnecessary. State and local commemoration of events were honoured in a mature, dignified and inclusive manner. The sacrifice of those who died in 1916 has been forefront of the centenary commemorations. The War of Independence was equally marked, but there has always been an omission. Hundreds of memorials to IRA volunteers killed from 1916 to 23 mark our countryside, and rightfully so. Up to 500 memorials marked IRA deaths in the Civil War. However, there are few, if any, commemorating the deaths of hundreds of National Army soldiers killed in the Civil War. These soldiers were members of the National Army of a new democratic nation state. They were our sons, brothers, husbands, just as much as those who died on the Republican side. Many of the National Army soldiers were veterans of the War of Independence. Some were veterans of the First World War. Others were economic recruits who had joined up in a time of economic turmoil. And some had been caught up in the militaristic times and were yearning for adventure. They died to uphold the treaty and the will of the people expressed in the June 1922 general elections. Sadly, the state and the defence forces are equally guilty in neglecting to appropriately commemorate fallen Irish soldiers on their home soil. Their sacrifice was effectively forgotten and neglected. This has now been rectified in some sense by Castle Dermot Local History Group with the Information Board commemorating the fallen of Grainy. Thank you. Thank you, James. Uh, and James will be talking on Wednesday evening here in Chalk Dermida on the Grainy Ambush, if any, uh, delighted to see as many of you as you want to. The other thing we have to thank James, uh, Kevin and Carl for is the uh, booklet you've uh, been handing around uh, today. So uh, we very much appreciate that and the support uh, of the the Decade of Commemorations Committee, both financially and uh, personally, to, to actually get us here today. So moving on from that, uh, our final uh, piece of the, the, the formal thing is to unveil uh, this, uh, the, the, this interpretive panel. So from Castle Mitchell outside of Thai, Mark Wall has been a Labour County Councillor until he was elected to the Senate in April 2020. Uh, and Mark is currently the party spokesman on the fence, tourism and sport. Mark is very familiar with the Castle Derm Dermot area, having very deep roots here. His father, Jack, a former Labour TD for South Kildare and Kildare GAA chairman, was born out the road from here and attended the, the National and Vocational School here in the town. And Bar Mar Mark's grandparents are interred out in Ballick Moon, one of our medieval graveyards out, uh, on the edge of, of the parish. So he can't deny how deep his roots go uh, around here. So a very appropriate person to unveil uh, this plaque for us. Mark. Uh, thank you very much, Liz. Um, Councillor Breslin, uh, Councillor McAvoy, uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends all, it's, a, it's an extreme honour to be here today, as Liz says, someone who's very proud of their Castle Dermot roots. I just also want to thank all the people that, that Liz has already thanked, but it's great to see people travelling uh, and relatives over from the UK to be with us here today, and you're most welcome uh, for this, what is a very historic occasion. I also want to thank the people of Castle Dermot, I want to thank the people of Kildare, because it's your local property uh, tax money that's actually paying for so much of this commemoration, and that's where so much of that goes, and to thank Councillor McAvoy and his committee for providing such uh, finance uh, to, so we can remember those that went before us. And as I said, it's, a, it's an extreme honour for me to be asked by the Castle Dermot Local History Group today to unveil this interpretive panel about the Grainy Ambush, uh, which took place on the 24th of October 1922. We are just two days away from the 100th anniversary of this event. As somebody who is very proud as Liz has said, and I want to say as well of my Castle Dermot roots, remembering very fondly those summer holidays up the road and regular visits in Brumperstown, I'm sure, like so many of you, 
I followed closely the stories and the tales of Gone By Days in Castle Ermit and its surrounding lands that the local history group have brought to us over the last number of years. And a huge thanks to you, Liz, and all your committee for doing so. And may your great work in doing and remembering Day Gone Bys in Castle Ermit continue. Well done, you all. Today we gather to remember a historic event which happened here in Castle Ermit 100 years ago, as I said, this week. In his book, James Dorney, who spoke just before me, uh, the Civil War in Kildare, James went on to write that the Civil War left its mark more violently on the county Kildare than the War of Independence. 45 people from or in from County Kildare died during 1922-1923, whereas 15 people died in the 1916-1921 to period. If you can get your hands on James' book, The Civil War in Kildare, I ask everybody to have a read of that because it is a terrific piece uh, 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 that James has written and it will put a, a picture for you all when you read it. It's to this background, of course, then, that the grainy ambush accounted for three of those deaths, namely Privates Edward Byrne, James Murphy and Patrick Allison. Today, along with Private Hunt, who also unfortunately was mortally wounded, we remember them all. In his speech of June this year at the National Civil War Conference in Cork, the Taoiseach stated that there's many stories that have remained untold. Today I want to remember one story of another Castle Derby man, my own granduncle, who was a member of the Moon Volunteers but died in service with the National Army in 1923. There are many stories like that that families haven't told over the years. And as Liz said in her introduction, it's time we start to talking about stories like that. Because as the Taoiseach went on to say, the Civil War was not a time to be celebrated. It was to be remembered in different ways and without enthusiasm. As a country, he said, we need to take fewer assumptions about the Civil War and be far more willing to engage with all of the events of that time. It was this in mind that we remember the events of Graney, Castle Dermot, on that October day in 1922. We remember those that lost their lives on that fateful day and also remember those that felt that they needed to pick up arms on that day too. We must never take for granted the peace we enjoy in this island today. We must never forget the events that shaped this great country, including the Grainy Ambush. It is our history. It is what shaped us. And for me and many others, it's a history that makes this great country. We should always remember we should never forget, but we should be enthusiastic about the future and what it can bring us all. It's a privilege for me to be asked here today, Gorv Magov Greaves Galer. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want to thank very much uh, Father Tom for his thoughtful and, and reflective words. James for putting things again in perspective uh, in the context of, of Kildare and the Civil War. And, and Senator Mark Work for officially launching it and for his, his thoughtful words again making us think about uh, where we are today. Um, and if you want, uh, and as I say, if you, we, James will be talking again on, on Wednesday night. And I know he's already talked in Carlo, and I know West Wicklow are after him as well. So uh, if you don't get the opportunity on Wednesday, maybe when he gets into Barton Glass, you might get the opportunity to go over and hear him speak there, because it really is um, uh, worth listening to. So... I just wanted to finally wrap things up and say we could not have undertaken today's event without the assist assistance of the local community here. In a recent Radio Castle Dermot programme on Castle Dermot's first responders, John Phelan and his guests continuously reminded us that if we needed help, all you have to do is ask. And I can assure you it works. We would like to thank staff here of uh, Castle Inn here on Eels, Castle Villa uh, Soccer Club, Kalosh de Lorcan, the secondary school, Dan O'Keefe and his colleagues from the GAA, Kildare's Decorative Commemorations Committee, Bridget Lachlan, Heritage Officer, Horns Garage, Chalk Dermida, 
Lord Edward's own reenactment group for Monster Evan and certainly take the opportunity to have a chat with them. They, they, they're fascinating to, to talk to. David Walsh, engineering, and Radio Castle Dermot, who say they come from the heart of the village, but are actually rapidly becoming the heart of the village here. Uh, so finally, I want to thank all our visitors, uh, those from uh, the, lower, the counties around us. I believe we have some from Kilkenny and Carlow, obviously, uh, and uh, as we mentioned, the UK, and maybe from Wicklow. Uh, and local politicians, local historians, and very much members of the committees who have come here to support us. Um, and um, obviously the local community. So we would be delighted if you would join us for some refreshments uh, over in O'Neill's and a chat, and maybe James might get even a few more stories on uh, the Granny Ambush. Right, hold on one more. Okay, sorry, we need to get a car moved. Uh, it's uh, uh, 162 WX481. Uh, silver. Gold. Silver, is it? Gold, Hyundai. Uh, Hyundai. If whoever owned it could move it, please, that would, we would be grateful. Thank you very much, and we look forward to having a chat with you over in, in O'Neill's. Thank you. Right. Okay. Mm, uh, yeah. Sorry, if any of the relatives or people who were involved in the ambush, if they wouldn't mind, come through and we'll take some photographs and we'll get them sent to you, if you would be kind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. How you going, James? Uh, John Phelan here, Radio Castle Dermot. Uh, James, just a couple of questions for you, and first of all, to welcome you again here to Castle Dermot. And uh, maybe you might just tell us a little bit about uh, the research that you did here into the Grainy Ambush. Well, it was really about 20 years, over 20 years ago, I was working on a book called On the One Road, Political Unrest in Kildare. And um, I came across the story of the Grainy Ambush and I thought it was, it was very poignant in all that this uh, Edward Bourne, a 16-year-old, was killed in one of the most lethal ambushes in County Kildare in that whole revolutionary period. And the more I looked into it, the more you learn and the more you find out. You know, and I, what I set out to do then was to find out uh, how it affected the local community and how it, who was involved in it on both sides, not just on the National Army, but also on the anti-treaty side who took part in the ambush. So I managed to trace about maybe 16 of those who took part from what was known as O'Connell's column in the ambush on the, the National Army soldiers. There was about nine of them in, in total. Four of them ended up killed in action and the others were all wounded, some of them severely and that. So it's just a kind of local story that, you know, there was, sto there, there was bits and pieces talked about but had never been fully put together. 
and it was kind of something that nobody really wanted to talk about um, especially those that were involved in it and it was just when we came here in 2017 to give a talk on it that you learn more and more about it and even still now we're still learning about it and that's what history is about is how we learn so that we don't make the mistakes of the past and um, it's great to see see it here that they're finally recognised because I said earlier that National Army troops who died in the Civil War get very, very little recognition and we just want to rectify that and it has been done here in Castle Dermot and that's one good thing of it. All right, that's... That, that's great, James. Uh, listen, th- thanks a million for that. And again, thanks for um, really, you know, your talk back in 2017 got the ball rolling for what's happening here today. So thanks a million. Thanks a lot. Okay, I'm uh, joined here now by uh, J- Jim Jim Byrne. Uh, maybe you might join me up up here up here, Jim. And um, Jim, you're uh, a nephew of Ned Byrne, is that right? That's right. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, and Jim, you wrote uh, a poem about your your uncle Ned, and uh, I'm just going to get you to to read it out here for everybody. Okay. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the name of the poem is My Uncle Ned. I'm his um, nephew. It's with deep regret I never got to know you. To say we both had a fair hair and eyes of blue. I often wonder to this day, did you ever get time to play, to, to pray? Before two bullets knocked you to the ground, or did you even hear the sound? Your loving mother lost her son shot down by a rifle gun. I hold no grudges to this day, but to be hit twice more was not fair play. So young, so loved, you had to die. I oft times ask the question why. To hide and shoot from behind the wall? Well, perhaps that tells it all. Rest in peace, Ned, your nephew Jim. Well done, well done, Jim. Very well, very well written. Very well written. Well done. And uh, I might just have a quick, quick word here now with uh, with Lily Whelan, uh, Lily, Lily being the chairperson of the history group. And uh, just turn. And uh, all right. And Lily, just uh, congratulations on today and uh, a great event and a great event for for us to cover. And I'd say you're delighted with the turnout and well done on all your guests as well. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm really amazed the amount of people that managed to come out on a, a, a winter sun, Saturday afternoon. And obviously uh, the the appreciation for yourselves and all of the people that have supported us. Uh, it's been brilliant and. Uh, it's nice that we're here to remember the, the, those people that were involved in, in, in setting us up, giving us our peace and our freedom. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's, yeah, they, 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 it's been really wonderful. That's great, really. Listen, well done again and well done on all, on all your committee. Uh, I'll just go here now and I might find somebody else to talk to.
Okay, I'm uh, joined here now by Barry, and Barry is uh, one of the the head people here in the enactment groups uh, from Monster Evan called Lord Edward's Own. Uh, Barry, how did you get going, and uh, you know what made you do what you're doing? Well, in 2004, a group of our friends went to a show in Cork in Kinsale, in Charlesfort, and we saw a reenactment groups there who were doing living history displays and fighting mock battles and things like that. And we came away that evening and we said, well, we could do that. And we went back the following year as 1798 pikemen. And after that, we fell in with some red coats from Britain and we got into black powder shooting and we've been all over the continent of Europe portraying the Irish soldier from 1798 all the way up to 1924. So I'm dressed here today as a Free State soldier from the Civil War in the uniform that they would have had and with the weapons that they would have carried on the day of the Grainy Ambush as well. And we do this to keep history alive and to spark off people's imaginations about what it was like back then. So you can read all about it in the history books and you can read it about it in James's booklet on, on the Grainy Ambush. But you can come to us and you can feel the weight of the weapon, you can feel the uniform and you can see what it was really like for the young men that were there on that day. Uh, that's great, Barry. So folks, you heard it there, you can come along, you can uh, feel, feel the uniform, to have, to have the weapons here. And uh, Barry, if somebody needed to get in touch with you for the group, do you have a Facebook page or a website or something like that? Yeah, you'll find us on Facebook by, fa uh, by just searching Lord Edward's Own Reenactment or Lord Edward's Own Living History, and you can find us like that. Very good, very good. Thanks a million, Barry, and uh, very well done on um, your enactment here today. Thank you. Okay, I'm uh, joined here now by Senator Mark Wall. Uh, Mark, you're very welcome here to Castle Dermot again, and uh, thanks a million for coming along and unveiling. But like uh, Lily said, you have deep roots here in Castle Dermot, and just, you know, what did it mean to you today to come over to Castle Dermot to unveil this? Yeah, it, it means a lot to me, John, because as I said, like, uh, Prumstown, which is just, obviously, people know it, it's, it's just, just out the road, uh, a, a small bit. I've spent many summers over there and regular visits that when, when Granny and, and Grandad were, were alive, obviously, and they're buried just up the road in Coldstown. So Castle Lermond is very important to me, and as I said today, I remember Michael Wall, who, a granduncle of mine who was a member of the Moon Volunteers and then ended up in the Irish Army, and that's stories that many families have, you know, in Kildare. So it's people like that that we need to remember. We need to keep talking. It's very important, as you know, to talk, and we need to look back but always to look forward as well yeah and uh, it's very true like so many people have stories about you know their their great uncles of you know our our age group or you know like we we sp spoke to jim there and, and it was his uncle who, who was killed and like you say just people keep telling stories keep talking and 
live in history. That's that's really important. It is, and that's why it's so important that we have the Castle Lermont Local History Group. They're doing tremendous work. They're recreating the living history, as you say, John. And I'd encourage everyone to come forward with those stories because they were being hidden for so long. You know, those stories that, you know, I mentioned the Taoiseach in, in my own speech. You know, he, he mentioned the fact that people were afraid to talk about the Civil War. But we need to talk about the Civil War because even talking about it, it's never going to happen again because that's what happens when people talk. People, you know, come out, come to compromise, come to go live together, and that's what the talking does, and that's what we need. You know, and that's that's what happens. We need to remember what happened at Grainy. It is part of our history, uh, and you know, but we need to look forward, and that's the most important thing today. All right, listen, thanks a million, Mark, and I look forward to uh, speaking to you on Monday evening. Uh, you're on my show, What Matters, Monday night. All right, thanks a million, Mark. Okay, folks, that's it from Radio Castle Dermot uh, today. And thanks a million to everybody for turning up. Thanks a million to the history group for having us here. And you'll catch me on Monday evening at 7 o'clock on What Matters. I have a a very exciting line-up again. And you'll have uh, Fuzzy and Leo on Radio Castle Dermot this evening from 7. So uh, don't forget to tune in on Twitch. And thanks again. And safe home and enjoy the refreshments in O'Neill's. Thanks, everybody.